What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 8 of my Total War Warhammer 3 Zatan the Black Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, Zatan has completed the takeover of the entirety of the Grand Bastion, making it all the grander, and now that it's in the hands of the Chaos Dwarfs. In addition to that, we nearly have our war machines up and running, as in next turn we will begin their recruitment for hopefully reasonably cheap, and I'm very excited to try out uh, the cannons and the Iron Demon at the very least, and more stuff afterwards. Now, we gotta get to try to uh, get to the end turn as fast as possible, so we gotta do several things. First of all, you, Scaff, are moving towards Titan's Notch, like so. And Eastern Promises Reward Capture and Occupy the following nothing. I, st I guess that's something that happened last time. Alright, so you go there, and we'll see if you can deal with uh, the enemy. Then, what we'll want to do is probably spend a little bit in the way of labor. So, Foundry of Bones, let's get some more raw materials. We need more and more and more raw materials, and we will need it forever, and in fact, we need to transfer some labor over to you as well. All right, let's also upgrade you immediately. And labor transfer, one of you... Yeah, you've got plenty, so one, two down, and red wastes, one, two up. Lovely. Uh, everything else, I think, is fine, except yes. And we do have a little bit of money remaining, so you know what? Let's send out a convoy for more uh, for more labor. We did get cannonry man, so cannonry man's gonna have to uh, gonna have to travel. Uh, as to where cannonry man is gonna travel, oh, there's a ruin there. Uh, Crystal Spires gives us raw materials, Bay of Blades gives us labor. Yeah, let's go for Bay of Blades. I really don't think that this is quite worth it. It's not enough raw materials. Uh, the labor, however, has to be acquired, and also feels more loreful in many ways. So, Bay of Blades, let's max it out. 438 labor is not horrible, and we can always sell off 200 to get 1500 gold, so it'll, uh, it's essentially double paying for itself. Dispatch. Perfect. All right, now we have three convoy men, and actually, speaking of the convoy men, uh, you should be level upable. Which is a word, I swear. Skills, better scales, 10% versus convoy cargo capacity, 15%. Uh, let's start with the cargo, cargo, cargo capacity, and then we'll move to sell value afterwards. There we go. Alrighty. Looks good to me. Probably nothing else that we can spend any money or anything on. Tower of Czar, it's still going to take a while for us to get another seat claim, but that's okay. Skill points. Let's do skill points. Why not? You finally have access to Boundless Cruelty, which we've been waiting for. Mm, I just want to double check if there's anything else in the blue line that would be... Eh, I'm sure there's some stuff that's okay, but nothing crazy. A you, Chaos Beard. Hmm, well, let's go for miscast reduction. We do overcast Flamestorm periodically, and Piercing Bolts of Burning, to be fair. Uh, Gordas, you're gonna get shoot him. You're waiting to get your own army shortly. And lastly, our Infernal Castellan. Let's get you increased mobility, since we already got uh, Piercing Shots, or Piercing Shots, Extra Powder. Lovely. All right, you guys have what you need. I do want to double check also... Oh. This is one turn away. All right, so we'll do that. Dragon's Crossroad. Oh, we can't afford you. Mm. All right, we'll build stuff there next turn. Then for now, we're going to skip, skip, and we're going to double-check diplomacy. Clan Ferric and... I mean, we could start trading with Clan Ferric. The other Chaos Dwarfs don't like them. You know, there are some Skaven thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ah, sorry about that. Had a bit of a coughing fit. Okay. Uh, something stuck in my throat. Uh, Skaven things like Death Globes could be very, very helpful with us and would work with uh, piles of goblin laborers. Funnily enough, in my Ikat campaign, I got a crazy amount of mileage out of this little tiny army with three Death Globes, three Manticores, and just massive piles of Skaven Slaves and nothing else. And that army just kept defeating big enemy armies over and over and over again because uh, the Death Globes don't care about killing off all of the Skaven Slaves and uh, they are just such a strong unit. That said, it doesn't have to be Clan Ferric. Mulder is probably the better thing, so I think we'll hold off on it for now. Especially since we don't have any buffs for him. Anyway, that's on the turn. And let's hope I don't get into another coughing fit. 
At least I hope. Alright, it looks like nobody's attacking us as yet. I really don't like you sitting there, Mr. Beast Man. Probably could have just destroyed you, but oh well. Uh, let's see. Not that ah, yeah. They see they're gonna start raiding our territory. I should have just destroyed them. See, my bad. <laughs> I freaking knew it. Uh, I always regret not destroying the beast man. But anyway, uh, let's upgrade some stuff. Hobgoblin bivouac. Though the recruitment. Ca okay, here's what we'll do. You are going to start recruiting. Ah, so cheap. So gloriously cheap. At least to recruit them. Uh, you're going to start recruiting your two magma cannons. Then, just so we don't waste the slot, the recruitment slot, let's get you another Hobgoblin Sneaky Git as well. Maybe two. Because we are preparing to uh, send out a, a Hobgobbler army. Hmm. Although... And 108 upkeep per turn, it's a little bit steep right now. You know what? No, let's uh, let's hold off on it. A, a couple of extra turns won't make much of a difference. Then we can switch you... Yeah, build the miners workshop. Uh, we can switch you back to the Masterful Architect so that we can upgrade you to Tier 2 at some point and reduce the cost of this upgrade because we'll need the Wolf Raiders for uh, Gordas's army. You... Oh, damn. I was going to... Mm, no, you know what? We don't have the extra labor. What we do... Ooh. We do need to pop that sudden example again. Or at least we will. You're still good. And you are still... Wait, you're both still good? Yeah, for at least another turn. All right, fine, fine, fine. Now that is fine. You know what's not fine? The fact that these ogres are still alive. And ah, damn. Ogre killer Baldig Mountain Eater has moved back to the territory with a full stack. I do wonder what he has in the stack. As long as I want it to. Hmm. Yeah, this might be a very difficult army for uh, us to fight a gold tooth. You're fighting the overlords of Zarduk. Or Zarduk. Uh, I'm wondering. How much would you give us to join your war against the Mountain Eaters? Barely anything. And then it's not worth it pissing off other factions. Alright, then we'll just declare war directly. Uh, here's what we will do. You are going to move in. Like so. Declare war. Servants of the Conclave. Yeah. Immune to high seas reef and storm attrition. And valiant defeat. What are we looking at here? Well, the ogres are going to be tough to deal with. Mm, but I'm still inclined to give it a try. Uh, you have no items. Eh? Maybe we should give you some. Uh, sort of strife. Uh, potion of... I guess we could give you the potion of strength. Hmm... You're not supposed to really be fighting in melee all that much. But once you have the Bale Taurus or the Lamasu, you know what? Fine. Take the Potion of Strength for now, and we'll keep the rest of the stuff off. Though I'm probably eventually going to transfer the Mirror Shield to him. Because he's also going to be casting, and it's more valuable. But, uh, you know, if he dies here because I screw up, which is a distinct possibility because, uh, well, the enemy has a pretty nice army. And, oh, these guys are probably going to come in to help, too. Man, I was hoping to avoid attacking this place. Titan's Notch. You know what? Maybe we'll attack it directly rather than sieging. In a few seconds. Uh, let's do whatever else we need to do. So Zorok will... Or Korok, Zorok. Uh, your army is garbage and it's not really worth the fight, so I think we'll just attack you. And kill your army. You're gonna run. But your army is full of Ungors, so you have no chance. Tower of Zara Ward Preceptor and Sillery. Uh, wait, is that what we just got? Huh. Navigator. Oh, we've got Navigator. Perceptor is probably the thing that gives us the answer. Uh, you go here. You ought to resolve this garbage. And yeah, I know that they have troops that we can fight, but we've... We've destroyed Cathian armies ten times more powerful than this with barely any losses. I just don't see the point. A Flamestorm would kill everything here. <laughs> to be fair. Auto resolve. And get that extra XP. Hey, a free Gleaming Pennant. Wow, we've actually acquired an Ancillary. I'm shocked. Uh, we're going to take the labor. Because we can sell it for much more money. Oh, in fact, then there's no point in taking... Huh. Uh, there's pretty much no point in ever taking the... Uh, 
the money, is there? Because the labor, generally speaking, will be worth 1,500 points per 200, or 1,500 money per 200 uh, labor. Huh, which is kind of interesting. Anyway, gleaming pennant for you. And you will fight in a second once we figure it out what else we want to do. You are going to go into March Dance and head into Snake Gate. And then hopefully into Nangao next turn. You've also leveled up a bunch, but I think we'll just uh, do those points next time around because I really want to get into a, a proper fight. And the faster we fight, the faster we kill, the faster we go to next turn or two turns and try out these glorious looking magma cannons. Uh, you then. Scaff, it is time for your debut. Try not to die, please. Now let's get the Gleaming Pennant on you directly. And here we go. Alrighty, here we go. Scaff Iron Pick. I was uh, I was hoping to ease you into it, my friend. Ease you into uh, a battle with a relatively easy one, but this one, uh, this one's gonna be a doozy. We will see whether we get Ogre Run. And, uh, well, I guess it's do or die for you already, my friend. Hopefully you do. And... I got a dual... Uh, yeah, double-headed axe as well as a gun. The guy looks pretty darn nice. Let's hope he survives to look nice another day. Anyway, here come the ogres, and on the bright side, though, we do have a pretty nice uh, position here. Uh, there is a massive cliffside in this particular map, so the enemy can't go on this flank really at all. And we even have this little, uh, I don't know, sort of alcove thing where our units of archers can be protected. I'm gonna hold them there. The enemy can't go up there. They can, I think, actually go here. I did check whether units could, but that would take absolute ages. In the meantime, most of the enemy army will be directly charging our units, and we shall have to see whether our three units of Chaos Dwarf blunderbusses will be sufficient. In terms of deployment, we obviously have our laborers out front, the hobgoblins behind them, and we will be keeping the dwarf warriors behind them, and just to to, uh, uh, just to make sure that all these guys die, both to the ogres and to the friendly fire from the blunderbusses first. Alrighty, here come the ogres. Uh, let's see how many blunderbuss shots it takes to bring them down. Fortunately, we have plenty of blunderbuss shots, and the ogres are uh, getting bloodied and uh, dropping. Gonna be careful with our hobgoblins, though, because obviously the hobgoblins are getting badly damaged uh, by the blunderbusses as well. Oh yeah, look at those blunderbusses firing. I've been hoping we get a lot more of them. And there we go, our first use of a uh, Lore of Hashut spell. Alrighty, I believe this causes a, a mini little vortex where it lands. Probably not super effective against the ogres and would actually probably be hurting us, but it does look cool. Yeah, very nice. Alrighty, keep it up main line. Oh, look at the look at that gunfire. I'm already very much enjoying this army, I gotta say. And of course, we'll get uh, we'll get some uh, war machines into this army as well. Not to worry. Now, frankly, every army is probably going to have at least some war machines. Alrighty, keep clearing out those ogres. There's only so much iron to the face they can handle when launched at blunderbust speed, or when launched at speed from the barrel of a blunderbust. Alrighty, looking pretty good. That is a lot of ogre corpses. We've managed to also very heavily damage the enemy lord as we did try to focus him down with our hobgoblin archers. Uh, despite the uh, 90 armor there, it looks like he did take pretty bad damage and the Sorcerer Prophet was attacking him before as well. Otherwise, there are more ogres moving in on the flanks here and our orc laborers are trying to hold them off. Looks like two of our units of gobbo laborers are pretty much out, or in fact three units are out and we are now relegated to Hobgoblin Cutthroats as the uh, laborers are gone, or at least the Gobbo variety are gone. Orky old laborers still fighting, however, and we'll hopefully continue to hold for a while yet as we do need somebody to take shots to the back from our blunderbusses, even as we go for the... Uh, uh, even as we go for the enemy ogres. 
Alrighty, and this is nowhere near the end of the enemy army. There's still all these units which tried to move around the cliff but decided not to, and more and more units are coming in as well. Saber Tusks have moved in to try to help the uh, uh, ogres and fight the orc laborers here, though I'm not super wary of the Saber Tusks because they should go into Rampage fairly quickly. Since they failed to get into our uh, back line, and they will most likely Rampage and become useless to the enemy, just wasting their lives trying to attack the uh, uh, trying to attack the laborers anyway it's finally time to commit the chaos dwarfs at least on that side it is and not uh, here as well we've run out or at the very least have taken a lot of damage on all of the goblins and now we need to hold the ground with the heavier infantry but that's just fine that's what they're there for they are held in reserve until the units that they hold contempt for are destroyed. Gotta go with at least a somewhat loreful strategy. The enemy tyrant gets brought down, focused down by all of those blunderbusses. And with the death of the tyrant, it looks like more and more units are starting to rout. The enemy is in pretty bad shape and the balance of power is about, uh, I want to say, 65% in our favor. There's still quite a few enemy units up here and our blunderbusses aren't getting a very good firing position, unfortunately. Mostly because of the uh, elevation of this kill. But at the very least, our hobgoblins goblins that are on this side, together with the remnants of the laborers that have not routed, like those ones, are still managing to hold. Now, what a glorious battle, though. I'm very glad that we took the battle, even though this looked very, very dangerous. Uh, but by the looks of it, it is beginning to go our way. Alrighty, some daggers coming in from the enemy Nobbler Trappers, and by and large, we are ignoring the Trappers. Once we kill the Ogres and the other uh, and the other melee units, the Trappers will probably rout either way. And most of the Ogres are in extremely bad shape and will, in fact, start running away. Oh, there's another unit of Trappers out there. Man, this alcove protecting our range units really helped here. Alrighty, and I'm seeing a lot of wavering units, and I do believe that will in fact be the chain route. Alright, man, holding this kill was absolutely glorious. Definitely one of the most fun battles in the campaign so far. Sadly, we can do nothing to chase the enemy, and it's not like we need to anyway, because this is a settlement battle, so the entire enemy army will be destroyed. I just wanted to move up and see if we could get another shot for some reason, and just for the fun of it. Anyway, a close victory, because obviously we did take quite a bit of damage getting through that, but I do think that this was the only army belonging to this faction, which means this faction is broken. Plus, they only have two settlements as well. Alrighty, what a fun fight. A, I, an unexpectedly fun fight. As a, well, maybe expectedly, but uh, I expected to do worse, I gotta say. I expected to get absolutely overwhelmed by the ogres, but you know what? You know what happens to an ogre when it's uh, shot by a blunderbuss? The same thing that happens to everything else. Uh, we got 34k damage on you and 21... Ooh, you need a name. You did very, very well. Uh, do I have any names in my list? You know what? I'll check the next episode. <laughs> I just don't want to be referring to their list constantly. I did already name one of you. Oh, yes, I do have an AK, okay, whatever, next time. Uh, labor and money. Looks good. It looks good to me. And we're going to occupy the place as, I guess, an outpost. And, ooh, the Immortals, Infernal Iron Sworn. Ah, man, we're getting all these regiments around. And yes, yes, I know, I'll put them into stuff. Don't you guys worry. Uh, we will be taking Yeti Peak. And then we'll have to think about what else we want to take. Oh, this will put us basically bordering with the uh, Western Provinces. That's interesting. And, oh, hello, Gemstones. Hmm. Gems hold great value for the precious in prize, with only the occasional demon imprisoned within. And this, uh, uh <laughs> poor malice. Uh, the, this resource may provide a unique building chain. When constructed, it will be available to trade through diplomacy. Although malice's was uh, a ring. But anyway. 
Although there was also a gem involved, but anyway, 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 I just like the word, okay? Uh, so, with that done, I do believe we're ready to end the turn, though I guess now we can spend uh, the points. I really wanted to get that battle. So since you have boundless cruelty, it is time to be going through a black shard bulwark will be wanting these guys buffed and power up or powered up uh, before we trade all of our hobnoblers away to the other uh, uh to the other army and wow 4757 they have better stats in every way uh, than our dwarf warriors well at the very least the dwarf warriors with the uh, great weapons damn yeah, Gordas buffs these uh, hobgoblins something fierce. Uh, anyway, you, Chaos Beard. Oh, we do have careful casting and sorceress. Oh, we can get both. I thought one was going to lock the other, but apparently not. Okay, well that's just lovely because these are both very nice buffs. Uh, we are going to go for the cooldown and ah, wait. No, it does actually lock them once you pick it. Okay, well ah, okay, it was buggy. Oh, <laughs> you can't see when... <laughs> okay, game. Okay, you got me. You got me. Hmm. All right, well, then you guys let me know what you think about these two. Physical resistance is really nice, but at the end of the day, this guy's still a caster. Even if he is on the Bale Taurus or the Lamasu, and even if he is still going to be fighting as a demon smith, the Winds of Magic Fire, the cooldown, and cost are both quite valuable. It will essentially enable us to cast an extra spell or two per battle. And faster as well. More piercing bolts, more flame storms, etc. Th on the other hand, yes, we do get a miscast base chance, but it's basically 20% physical resistance with the miscast being counteracted by earthing in combination with a tech that uh, does the same. So, I don't know. Yeah, you guys have any other thoughts. Uh, anyway, you guys. Oh, you know what? You get hit by missiles so much when you're helping. So let's get you headdress of Zar, or Jar, and uh, we'll build the other stuff up afterwards. All right, lovely. Gordas, max out, shoot him up, please. And Castellan. Uh, let's get you. Mmm. I mean, I guess we want to head towards restock. You know what? Our artillery is constantly running out of ammunition, like to a hilarious degree. So let's get that first. And then next level, we'll get the Inspiring Inferno. Oh, I like the name. Uh, there we go. Alrighty, and I believe that is all we can do this turn, at least in terms of moving and stuff. I'm sure we have buildings to build, uh, but that is saved for next turn. So skip, skip, add post available. Oh, you leveled up as well from that. Yeah, but honestly, next battle should be relatively trivial. Oh, you do need more healing, though. You don't have the healing bonuses provided by your, uh, uh, by the other stuff, by the other heroes. Maybe we should put one of the regiments of renown in this army. But I was gonna put them all into, uh, uh, into Zatans. Zatan doesn't have to have the Dark Ravager's Bull Centaur renders, though, for example. And I like the idea of using the Immortals essentially as his uh, as his personal guard. But we can't have just all of the uh, Regiments of Renown in his army, and I'm looking at them all and I'm wanting them all, damn it. Hmm. Although, actually, the melee defense that he provides would be beneficial to the Immortals because they are, by the looks of a dual axe infantry. Hmm. One check thing, or one thing I want to check. Hey, you, Mr. Sca oh, wow, you leveled up a lot. Uh, what can you buff? Casual to replenishment rate, vigor loss reduction. Wait, what? It only benefits the monsters. Oh, well, that's interesting. Uh, flesh sacrifice and magic item drop chance cooldown ends when wins a magic power reserve. Nice. Uh, we do want to get your root marcher. We do want to get your burning wrath. We want to head towards bonk, hellhammer, but I'm going to call it bonk. Uh, killing fire, your passive ability gives... Direct damage, yeah. Yes, please. Uh, next up, we have Ash Storm, and I'll uh, I'll be getting every single spell because I want to show off all the uh, all the spells, obviously. But anyway, this is a hex that causes weakness to fire damage and speed reduction, but isn't super valuable for us right now. Dark Subjugation, we already have a basic form of, and Curse of Hashut gives us a direct damage ability on one unit. Does Overcasting still against only one unit? 
But I'm still going to get them all because I want to try them all out. I'm very tempted to get the next upgrade for Burning Wrath, but then it'll take longer to get to the good stuff out here. So we'll probably hold off on it. Yeah, fine. Get Curse of Hashud for now, and on to Evasion. Alrighty, you are now good, at least until we can get you a couple of uh, magma cannons and other war machines and whatnot. Outpost upgrade available we're not going to bother with right now, so that means we can end the turn. Definitely not wasting our time upgrading the uh, gates. And I once again still a little bit at least regret to not just straight up destroying them. For the, uh, for the resources. Alright, so it looks like Hmm, Meow Ying is not at Nangao, which is interesting, but it's also a little bit concerning. And because by now she probably has a full stack somewhere, which means while we take Nangao, we may actually lose another location. But we only still have one army here, at least for now. Though it's getting there. It's getting there. Closer and closer. One turn until you two. She's probably building up her army at Wei Jin or possibly at Wang Chang. Uh, you can reach Nan Gao, so to Nan Gao, you shall go. Well, she's not at Nan Li. And what do we have in terms of defenses? Decisive... You have, like, no defenses? Okay, we can auto-resolve this. A little bit of damage, but not concerningly enough. Uh, we will occupy this tower. Too bad we don't have any Conclave influence, but honestly, for one level, it's not worth it. Occupy this tower. Charmed Shield. Nice. You know what? You know who can get a charmed shield? Scaff. We need to give him stuff. Uh, let's have a charmed shield for you, my friendo. I'm not your friendo. Alrighty. <laughs> well, let's head to Yeti Peak. Yeah, we're hurt, but we should be able to take it. Oh. Hello. These guys might declare war on us and attack Titan's Notch. Uh, you cannot auto resolve. Okay, we're gonna have to manually fight this super quick, though. Dumb, but, you know, no choice. Uh, oh, huh. You have the Hobgobbler building here. You could stop and get a few better Hobgobblers rather than the pile of laborers. Hmm, maybe a couple cab units as well. And we can certainly afford it. To a degree. Also, you have more Hobgoblin units. Hmm. You know, keep it. Keep it there for now. Uh, what does pottery do for us? Construction cost for all buildings in province. Oh my. That's nice. That's real nice. Damn it. You know what? No, delete it. And delete it. We're going to replace it with the clay pit in combination with the money pit. In fact, my money pit first. Donation barrel. Whatever. And don't accept labor as yet, but you will later on. Now, speaking of labor, we need to do several things. You need to set an example. Get that control fixed. You also need to set an example. Get that control fixed. You need to set an example. <laughs> I'll stop. Uh, yeah, set an example. There we go. And everything else, I believe, minus potentially upgrading stuff for money, is okay. Uh, we switched to Masterful Architects here because we wanted to upgrade Iron Storm, I believe. Though it is quite costly to do so. And the reason I want to upgrade it right now is because A, we can get the uh, treasure trove, but B, we can get the next landmark. Now, which is going to give us 50 armaments per turn, which are going to be useful, as well as upkeep reduction for war machines. Which, since we're about to be building a ton of them, we may as well. Uh, 3.2k for gun turrets, eh? And we could save for it, but I feel like we want to maybe upgrade a few more of these places to tier 2 or possibly 3. Hmm, what tier are you at? Yeah, I could upgrade you. Let's start with this, the Overseer's Tower. Ugh, the cost, the terrible cost. And we'll... Maybe we want to upgrade the Ramparts here as well. It is still more Conclave influence. You know what? Yeah, let's upgrade this place, because it'll be cheap to build stuff because of the pottery reducing costs. And we want to move towards that tier 5 as soon as we damn well can. Alrighty, well, Zatan for now is good. You're moving in. Ooh, I want to double check. Do we yet have a new Overseer? Nope, still these two garbagers. Okay, well, not much we can do about that as currently. Uh, Conclave Influence is looking pretty good. Still three remaining. We could pop that Black Alchemist and then get the uh, Sorcery District up and running, which would 
and give us access to tier 2. Alternatively, I really like the idea of Warmonger, but currently all the territories are close enough so that this doesn't actually give us that much. So yeah, I think we'll go for Black Alchemist. Alright, skip unassigned skill points, building upgrades, and end the turn, and let's see if Meow Ying comes for Poe Mech, which is what I'm expecting. Prove me wrong, Meow Ying. Make me look like an idiot. Ah, okay, well this was always gonna happen. Uh, no. I don't want the uh, the main territory to get attacked and screwed over. Let them let them do their own thing. If uh, if Jarnagrund is taken out before we can confederate them, considering they're a tier five territory, I would be very disappointed. So and this is why, if you're wondering, I'm not drawing them in. Especially against powerful factions like uh, like the Western Provinces, who are um, I'm sure are coming towards us. Ooh. And what do we have here? Well, we're going to choose influence, but I want to read this. Your actions have not gone unnoticed by your dark master, for he offers his twisted blessing. Empowered by mighty Hashut, your position among the Dawijar has never been stronger. Demand whatever you want from the Conclave of Evil. None will dare question your will now. Yeah, it's obviously influence. Hardly a choice. Future of the Dabijar as well, magic item drop chance, and increased demon smith capacity. Which is great, we need that. Why? Because- oh, we can't build them until we build a structure. Okay, we're gonna need to build a structure. And there's Meow Ying! Well, well, well. Hmm. And now the question is, where is she going? Alright, here's what we're gonna do. You... Yeah, you are gonna go into ambush. You're gonna go right here. I have no idea where she's going, but if she hits Turtle Gate, it'll probably fall, but it'll be fine because we can retake it immediately. Maybe she's going to try to go for Nan Gao, in which case maybe we'll be close enough. There's a decent chance that the ambush also gets foiled, but we shall see. And now you get another point leveled up, and we are going to make sure that we use these points right now because we might have a fight against Miao Ying. Uh, you... Inspiring Inferno. No Disco Inferno, but oh well. And uh, then you, a Recruiter Damonzork. So, here's a concern. I would like to send you to Dragon's Gate, but what if Miao Ying attacks it and it falls? Can she actually reach the... Oh, she has another army. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. Hmm, okay. Well, that's more concerning than I'd like. Uh, these guys are moving through our territory, but... Well, they haven't attacked it. Oh, did I siege this instead of fighting it? My bad. I completely forgot. Oh, but on the, on the other hand, now we can auto-resolve. <laughs> At least we didn't waste time this way. Uh, occupy his tower, please. Very nice. Very nice. Mountain Eaters destroyed. And oh, no. I should not have auto-resolved that. You're in trouble, Scaff. You're in trouble. Well, he's going to have to fight for his survival next turn, then. What can you do? Damn. That was... that was a terrible mistake. Maybe another point in Curse of Kashut? Hmm. So that we can use it on... Uh, on their lord repeatedly? Hmm. What does Ashstorm do again? Speed and weakness to fire damage, yeah? And it's for 48 seconds. Mm, we don't have a lot of fire damage in this army, though. In fact, we have none. So yeah, I think we'll get another point in Curse of Kashut. All right. Why did I auto resolve? <laughs> oh, maybe he can't reach us. Maybe. Nah, he can reach us. We can reach him, so he can reach us. Well, darn. Uh, you, Scaff, maybe did. Well, let's see. What do we have here? Building smokestacks. None of this helps us defend, does it? You know, let's go for military doctrine. Maybe next turn we can recruit a few things. We're not going to bother upgrading anything here. We do have a little bit of a garrison, which Roll might uh, plug a few of the holes in our uh, uh, in our battle line, though probably not as many as we'd like. Also, I'd love to check on the convoys. One turn and two turns. Okay, so they're not back yet, and neither of you two has anything interesting. We'll send uh, we'll send this guy out for a long trip afterwards. Now, well, let's build some stuff. Let us build some stuff somewhere. Ooh, also, let's get you Brazen Bodyguard. Ooh, wait a second. We do have a spare amount of this stuff. Construction cost reduction for outpost settlement buildings. 
This would allow us to go for rush labor construction cost reduction and building construction cost reduction everywhere. So I think we're going to live to work, work to live. Just like real life. Hmm, there's some nice stuff here as well. But for now, we ain't doing it. Uh, we also have armaments that could be sold, but we also want to increase capacities. I wonder. Do we risk Dragon Gate potentially falling by you moving there? You know what? You're gonna go to Dragon Gate. I'm hoping the Magma Cannons can, uh, can hold. Though I am very wary of uh, Miao Ying just uh, killing them in her dragon form. Let's hope it doesn't happen. You, Bloodwind Keep, are going to get upgraded to Hobgoblin Bivouax. And... Not next turn, but the turn after that we'll need to switch to Military Doctrine to recruit more stuff. Alright. And we could send a convoy to trade some armaments now, which I think we will do. But then otherwise we will use them for the uh, Hellforge. Uh, you know what? How much is this going to cost us? Wait, uh, range infantry, missile infantry, extra powder. If we get this, it'll cost a 32 per turn upkeep. But we're very reliant on these guys doing a lot of damage. And we could increase, I guess, uh, I think it's time to increase our armament uh, production. Honestly, it's not a crazy buff. Like, yes, it'll make them do a lot more damage while they still have a decent amount of ammunition. But I'm just thinking in the uh, form of needing all the buffs we can get for uh, uh, to survive against uh, Zhao Ming. What was the buff for these guys? Frenzy, Spell Resistance, and Charge Reflection. It's not bad. Frenzy's also not bad. Makes them hit harder. This is going to cost us 40 per turn, though, because we have more of these guys. Hmm... Suppressive fire is nice. Reload reduction, extra reload. Yeah, that's so. This, these are the two, I guess, that we will uh, that we will want to combine. You know what? Just do it, I guess. Just do it. Maybe it'll help you survive. Alrighty. And it's quite a bit of a loss of uh, the armaments per turn, so we will want to counteract that by constructing more armaments. But we will also need to counteract that by constructing more uh, more of the other stuff. Anyway. Uh, we could make you... we could speed you up, I guess. Or you. Eh, why not? It's not a huge loss of labor. There we go. And that one looks good. Anything here that really needs to be sped up? We do have a lot of labor. We could speed up the tier 3 at Iron Storm, but then we'll be out of labor if we do. And then there's nothing to build or speed up here. Alrighty, which means... One other thing. Granite Guard Dwarf Blunderbusses. Yeah, you know what? I don't think we're going to build Zatan's army around Dwarf Blunderbusses. And the reason I'm saying this... Hmm... Yeah, we can get Dwarf Blunderbusses elsewhere. He can't have all the stuff. We're gonna give this to Scaff here. Uh, you and you are the most hurt. Into one unit. And let's get the Granite Guard in this. 300 gold per turn, but hopefully that will help you survive. We have some very strong units there. Hopefully he doesn't have another army that we can't see. Oh man. And is he allied with Goldtooth? No, they're not friendly by the looks of it. At least not, uh, not currently. Hmm. This also may be a decent time for Grimgore to attack us. Maybe we've moved you too far away there, friendo. I really wish I had not auto resolve. Building upgrade available. Skip. And end the turn. Here we go. Alright, Meow Yang, you're up first, and you will indeed attack Snake Gate. We could allow her to auto we could allow the auto resolve. I almost feel like we could fight this. Hmm. We won't win, but we could do damage. You know what, let's manually fight this. I know, I know, I'd rather cinematic battle, but uh, we have garbage towers here, and we just want to do a little bit of damage to the enemy army, otherwise that ought to resolve it. So we're going to fight, and I'm going to speed through it. The army has no chance of winning, simply because they have no chance of bringing down Meow Ying, who's a very strong lord. If it was a Generic Lord, we'd probably try to do more damage, but uh, not like this. 
All right, and Meow Ying will probably kill everybody on top of the walls, which will make all of our, ra well, our range advantage quite useless. But anyway. It's okay, because if she wins here, she's stuck. And we simply kill her with Zatan again. And then start taking more of her territories. Uh, alrighty, so you guys back here. She did not siege, so she did not build anything. Uh, there are a bunch of ranged units here, so let's get you here. Let's get you here. Uh, or maybe you here. I don't know. Where's the most melee units? There's two here, there's two here. Oh, they're kind of evenly spread out. And Grand Cannon there as well. I do have to wonder how effective these guys are in firing down. That'll remain to be seen. Alrighty, let's put you... You know what? Let's put you here, like this. Hmm, no, that didn't work. Oh well. Alright, that's fine. Docking's kind of iffy anyway. Uh, let's put some laborers here. And then let's put some gabos here, so where they can't get killed. And then the other unit of laborers here. And that's it, right? That's all the units we have. Wait, no, it's not all the units. We still have the Dwarf Warriors, but there's a reason I don't want them on the walls, and that reason is that I want them to die by enemy cannon fire and range fire. So we'll put you down here and reinforce the walls as we go. Alrighty, start battle. Alright, now you guys, target the Grand Cannon. Target the Grand Cannon. Target the Grand Cannon. And are these... These are arrow towers, right? They're not cannon towers? Yeah, they're arrow towers. The enemy used uh, cannon... or. Uh, Cannon towers against us, but oh well. Oh well, here we go. I'm just gonna do a pseudo cinematic. Oh, they're going to try to target the wall. Not oh my lord, that wall's going down quick. Uh, <laughs> okay, well if that's gonna fall, we're gonna need you guys to block it off. How quickly can we take out these cannons? Wow, yeah, the towers are not really doing much to them. And I take it you're going for the wall as well. Yeah, the towers won't be able to knock those uh, knock those cannons out. Tremendously sad. All right, let's just put a unit here. And once again, I probably would have auto-resolved this, but uh, on the bright side, we get to hear the cannons fire. So far, this is the best uh, sound design for cannon fire in the game. I absolutely love the way these things sound. They're fantastic. Fire again, please. Oh, we got destroyed just as it was going to fire. fire. Where's the other one? <laughs> How are you doing? Uh, quite alive, and you've nearly breached the wall. Oh, wait. Were, are all their models destroyed? Yeah, they're down to crew. The walls are not breached. Oh, my lord. Well, this is uh, still vanilla, which means the enemy will... Uh, uh, okay, you know what? You go up here. Uh, the enemy will break through the gates. Still, at the very least, we've badly damaged the enemy uh, crew. Actually, if we could destroy the cannons, that would be great. And, ooh, yes. Oh, we get some fire from our... Uh, uh, from our blunderbusses here. All right, down you go. Down more of you go. Beautiful. Keep it up. And you guys reposition right here. And fire more on the enemy. All right, how's that cannon crew? Nearly done for? All right, keep exchanging fire. And you guys are going to climb. Well, that's fine. You keep on climbing. Meow Ming is just sort of sitting there with this portion of the army. I think the AI really expected to knock down these walls. Uh... We're still not going to win because we can't kill Miao Ying, but still. Oh! You know what we can do, though? Ah, we don't have enough. I was hoping we would have had uh, 4,000 at this point. Or 2,000, rather. I guess we could start building the piercing towers. They could fire at Miao Ying. Yeah, go for it. Why not? And we can build more up here. How's the rest of this looking so far? We got peasant archers climbing. They're obviously going to have a, a fairly bad time. But you are not firing anymore, are you? Well, I guess they're fighting in melee, sort of. All right, everybody else keep doing your thing. Will the cannon crew escape? Maybe. I should say probably. And these guys are going to climb. I have to watch the walls. And oh, wow, you're getting, getting absolutely wrecked up there, boys. Uh, too bad. All right, we got some jade warriors climbing, so you're going to counteract them. And yeah, these guys are now down. But at least the towers continue to fire. Uh... You, peasant archers. Mm, yeah, they'll probably lose against the Gawas. Oh, and they're through the gate. Jade warriors are climbing in. Okie dokie. At the very least, the blunderbusses are having fun. But the blunderbusses always have fun. 
I love watching these freaking things fire. They're so fun. Alrighty, and we have nearly enough for another piercing tower. We could build a couple up here. We could build a couple of the basic piercing towers. Just to spread it out a little bit. Yeah, why not? And the fact is, we most likely won't be able to use any of them anyway. Why? Because our, uh, our forces will route, will chain route. And then the enemy won't care. Alright, and they're nearly through another gate, alas, and we can do nothing about that one, I think. Uh, you guys fire on the peasant archers as they go in. Meow Ying's nearly through the gate. We got more Jade Warriors coming up here. But at the very least, the enemy army will be kind of heavily damaged by this point. And thus, they'll probably have to take over the place because if they turn that down, we'll kill them. I doubt that they'll sack. Too bad the ambush didn't work, but... Honestly, I don't care about this nearly as much as I care about the uh, the Jiao Ming battle. Anyway, you guys are still not shattered. Okay. What about these units? You know what? You. Ah, oh, we can't leave this. If we leave it, we won't be able to fire. As in, the towers won't be able to fire. Damn. I was hoping to send these guys out somewhere. As in, to fire into the gate. Oh, you know what we could do? You, go here. Go, 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 go. Take these towers. You. Go here, quick, fast as you can. And yeah, you guys keep fighting the Jade Warriors. Yeah, but the laborers won't win against them. Hey, you guys are holding the skate for at least a couple more seconds, but Meow Ying's about to make it through, which means that you'll be destroyed. All right, I guess we keep watching the walls. I'm a little bit regretting not making this a cinematic battle, but it's called call it a pseudo cinematic. I didn't expect as much. Uh, I didn't expect our army to have as much fight as it does. Ah, we got another uh, we got another tower that we can build up here. Uh, still another basic tower, but that's just fine. Yeah, these guys are through and they've captured the wall. Looks like our work laborers are looking to route as well. You guys are gonna move like so, so that you guys turn off. Oh, you're not in skirmish mode, so that you guys can fire. All right. How's everything else going? Oh, Meow Ying's taking dragon form, and we got peasant archers that are somehow moving through. Oh, how dare you! And some of our towers aren't firing anymore. Ooh, you try to kill this unit of peasant horses if you can, please. Ah, there we go. Blunderbusses are working on the gate now. Honestly, if we had two more units, if we had two more units, I feel like we could have won this. But mostly only because the AI is atrocious at sieges. Why are you turning this way? Who told you to turn? Oh, no. <laughs> I see why you're turning this way, because Miao Ying is wrecking your face. Uh, run through the melee and hopefully force her into melee herself. Alrighty. Back away. Hopefully she gets forced into this fight. Come on. Probably not taking a lot of damage. I mean, Miao Ying is not taking a lot of damage. Alright, everybody keep on fighting. And yeah, she's just kind of moving through. No, our blunderbusses are best unit. Try to go up on the walls, see if that helps you get away. And how's those... Man, these laborers have been holding off the Jade Warriors for a long time. And I get it because it's uh, it's at least partly because they're tired. Ooh, we have another tower that we can build. Uh, we can build one here. There's a unit moving up there. You switch to Piercing Tower. I think we can build more here as well. Eventually, anyway. Probably should have just saved for a, a higher tier tower. No, she did in fact move down. Oh, lovely. Uh, could you guys fire into this? Let's find out. Alright, take position. Come on, fire into those Jade Warriors. You can probably knock them out with a few volleys. Very nice. You gotta love those blunderbusses. These guys are shaken now. Granted, our own units are shaken as well, but the Jade Warriors will be ripped apart by the blunderbusses, just like our Orc Laborers will. And the enemy will, by the looks of it, route. It looks like our Chaos Warf Warriors are nearly done, at least over on this side. You guys move here so that you can fire on the uh, various peasants. Uh, peasant horsemen moving through. And yeah, these guys are gonna capture the towers. And we just don't have the troops to stop them. Try to build another tower here before they do. Are you guys, are you towers able to reach this at all? Oh, right, and I got too used to SFO towers because they're able to fire on anything, basically. And uh, they arc over everything, whereas vanilla towers can't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah hobgobbler there. Hobgobbler here, hobgobbler there, hobgobbler everywhere. You know what? Uh, fire at those peasants. Or I move here. And fire at these Jade Warriors instead. Blunderbusses? Oh no. <laughs> She's back. 
Oh, man. All right, wait. Get off the wall. Now I'm going to speed this up. Battle's pretty much over anyway. And then get on the wall again. Okay, no, that didn't work. Oh, fire a few shots if you can, please. Come on, come on, come on, come on into those enemies. Ah, no, she's going to come back. Oh, well. Oh, well, the chain route is here anyway. It doesn't matter. Well, I'd like to think we did uh, fairly reasonable amounts of damage in this particular situation. Much more than I was originally expecting to. We are probably about to lose our command points as well because the towers cannot uh, cannot support said command points enough. But hey, uh, a little bit more damage might uh, might not go amiss. Oh wow, you guys actually ran out of arrows. Nice. And well done to you, noblers or goblo gobos hobgoblins, hobgoblers. There we go. A valiant defeat, but you know what? That was, I think these guys did fairly well. Yeah. She lost more than half her army to this. Both cannons, depending on if they survived a lot of peasants, most of the horses. Not too bad, all things considered. Honestly, even if we had put a basic lord there, they still wouldn't have won, simply because, well, even the basic lord would have had no way to kill Miao Ying. The only way to have won this was, once again, to shatter the entire army and then force Miao Ying to shatter. But we didn't have enough troops for that. But it's fine, because we're going to retake this with an auto-resolve. Uh, you are going to attack... Huh. You know what, I think this one will auto-resolve. This one we would win. As we saw, the only thing threatening us in this particular situation was Miao Ying herself. I just auto-resolve it. It's fine. It's a, I feel like this battle, the enemy wouldn't have a chance. Mostly, and the, um, the main reason I'm not doing this and not playing this is because I want to see whether Zhao Ming attacks us. Uh, because if he does, it's going to be a fight for survival, which I am very excited for. Uh, we're going to take the money. Alright, Zhao Ming. Amb Oh, she moved out. Oh, well, she has no chance here, so she's dead again. But uh, we'll meet her again in the end of the faction. I know, lots of... Uh, wow. Basically no losses. Haven't seen that. And you can take... Mm, take the money. All right, yes, indeed, he will attack, and we will have to fight for survival. They have a frickin' fire rain rocket. Oh, no, how the heck are we gonna deal with that? Oh, man, that's not good. I did not think that they would have a fire rain rocket. We're gonna have to, I don't know, rush forward and hope that we can manage... Ooh, or deploy all the way back and hope that our hobgoblin sneaky gets can take it out? I don't know. Well, either way, we're completely out of time and we'll start off next episode with this battle. And, uh, well, Scaff Iron Pick, you're gonna have to do or die, man, because I don't believe you have immortality. So stay tuned to find out whether Scaff lives next time. We'll start the episode off with that. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.